So, um, um, the show um, that Simon um, just did right now was about um, torturing with sound. It's long history, actually, and developing techniques. So, before talking about the book um, um, you're uh, publishing with uh, Christian and uh, on Collection Riponov, maybe we will talk about what you will do, both of you, Brian Louis Sanders and John Duncan, tomorrow. It's it's a special show you prepared. I heard some rumors about Iranian techniques and and something. What? Firstly, my first question: torturing with sound. What? What is the torture with sound for you? Um, per I think it uh, depends on the uh, personal individual. What types of sounds um, really? can instill fear in them, but all people have, um, I don't know how to explain it, but all, all people have some fears that are triggered by the sound. And so... Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, when yeah. you're in, in a dark place, you hear a sound of like, oh, I'm, you no. know, you're afraid. No, I mean, mean in a lot more like a basic loud. level. Okay, like, like lightning or thunder or something, like you can feel it. It's like sound is a physical presence. A, a lot of his work, I think, f uh, focuses on using sound as a physical entity. I don't want to speak for you, but this is what I take away from a lot of it. So, so, um, uh, yeah, but like Abu, let me say, uh, like Abu Ghraib and the places where they torture people, mm -hmm. they use like uh, heavy metal or pop music, things like this, and they just repeat it over and over mm -hmm. again for like 72 hours or something. Mm -hmm. They just leave Britney Spears on for 72 <gasps> hours. It's torture, mm -hmm. it, there's no doubt about it. But it's legal, you know, it's not using sound as a weapon necessarily, but it r really is. I mean, if you're the victim of this type of abuse, it's torture. We, we heard just before the, the the music of Barney the dinosaur. It's a yeah, yeah, child, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it was already u it was also used with the programs like Sesame Street and everything. And it was also oh, used really? as a torture because first of all because of the volume of the of the sound that that is sent, but also because of the cultural dimension. You know, because it represents you know like mm -hmm. the American culture and everything, and right. and, be, and because your ear cannot be closed. Yeah. So it's 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 a it's a way to intrude yourself in the body of the other, and it's yeah, it must be terrible actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and what 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 about your your performance? I I wrote about uh, I wrote about what you wanted. To, if I'm not wrong, you you were talking about the third ear. You made an yes. experiment. I think yes. very interesting. If you could uh, maybe explain to us a bit. What, what, what is it about? Basically, I thought I had the naive idea that if I totally blocked up my ears and made it so that I couldn't hear, except through the inside of my mouth, because when we yawn, we open up the eustachian tubes directly into the middle ear. And so I thought by blocking my external ears and having sound go through my body in this other way through the inside of my mouth, that it, the sound would go in hit my pineal gland. It was kind of like this uh, naive, like a delusion. I thought, oh, if I redirect the way sound enters my body, I can focus it and then hit this part of the brain that induces hallucinations and things like this. But it, 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 there's a lot of similarities with that act. And then also it was very torturous. The act was very torturous because I went through several different stages of hearing. And every time I would have to ask myself, okay, is this something I can live with? Like if it, if it stays like this for Ever, like what what how will I survive like what can I do and each time I had like some friends on Facebook like a little group a hundred people that were like giving me moral support constantly and like looking stuff up and then telling me things and then I could decide like okay if I can live with it and stuff like that so and then and I also uh, John uh, made an album at, w at one point during the experiment uh, I came up with this belief, and I still believe it, that I was able to breathe sound because I had this copper funnel attached to my mouth. And a, like a harmonica or a trumpet, a lot of people that play like reed instruments or something, they use what's called tongue block, where they take their tongue and they'll make a sound, but then they can stop it by going like this with their tongue. And so what I would do is I started sitting in front of the, sitting in front of the speaker, and then 
I would breathe in the sound and then stop it with my tongue and then exhale the air through my nose. And so then the pressure kept building up and building up in my chest because sound is a pressure wave. And then at one point, once I had done this long enough, like maybe seven minutes or something of breathing in this sound, all of a sudden I would get this diffuse, diffusion type of feeling where the sound would just like burst out of my lungs and through my soft tissue and muscles and organs and then into my bloodstream. And then I was um, breathing sound, like this is what's happening. So I emailed John and I was like, yes, this, I think I'm breathing sound. And then he made an album for me specifically to inhale. Like he made the music, not to listen to it, only to breathe it. It, it was Zev, really if cool. I'm not wrong, no? Hmm? Zev, the percussionist, or am yeah, I wrong? Uh, John too, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So um, we're preparing this album. Now tomorrow there will be a live show, you together. So you prepared an album, John, um, like uh, Brian just said. The album that I prepared for him to breathe was it's, something that was specific, specifically for him, and it was a, for me it was a very interesting experiment because it, it it called on me to imagine hearing in a completely different way, in a way that that was completely alien to me, and he and Brian said that there were certain sounds that hurt. So I thought, well, without really knowing what I'm dealing with, I still have to be careful in making, in, in composing these sounds for him. To, to try to imagine what could hurt and then avoid that. Because the, the point there was not to torture him, but to give him something that was, was actually a sensual experience. Yeah, like the, it was, um, I wouldn't say, it, it was a release, like a, a wonderful release where I could have a moment of, uh, some moments of peace while I was listening to it and it would last a period of time before the pain and the suffering that I call purgatory, before it came back, I could like breathe the album and stuff, so it was really, really cool. And, um, and tomorrow it would be the first time you do this together live. It's not It'll be exactly totally different, though. Totally different, but yeah. in what exactly? Because tomorrow's yeah. show is quite secret. Yeah, yeah. It's like to... I don't want to... What I heard is that there is a kind of a... kind of a chair, if you can say, because I, I just saw you outside here building something with a staff or someone, like Nicola Munu or something. And May I talk about the chair? If you want to. Uh, yeah. But, I don't know. but it's, up to, it's up but, to you. But, if you want but to. here, you got sure. an instrument for, for yes. our listeners. Okay. So it's a tether oh or something, God. no? Yeah. It's a tether. Like it's policeman stuff, no? Yeah. yeah. So what, 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 would be, wow. what would be the use of this? Okay. On him? How to make music? Okay. Wow. I think it's very good. So, yeah. Five million volts. Five million volts. Right. And this will be used tomorrow in the in the event. And the the um, the prop that will be used is a is a design that that was inspired by the um, uh, Iranian Savak, the secret police in Iran during the Shah's regime. They're still very active now. In uh, in Besiege. Are they different than the besiege, the moral police that are in Iran, that are like on motorcycles, like the thug, no, 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 religious yeah, thugs? It's as, different. As far as I know, they're different. Okay. I mean, I wondered. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from a long distance and from very little information, but uh, as far as I know, they're very different. The Savak were um, designing tortures of prisoners in Evan prison in Tehran. One of the things that they came up with, one of the devices was a, something they called the Apollo chair, which is a metal, was a metal framework with a, uh, basically a can, an inverted can that the prisoner's head would be put into. 
and when the prisoner was tortured and, and the prisoner would scream, those screams would resonate inside this can and deafen the, the prisoner. So the prisoner would be deafened by his own screams. And that was, that was part of the, that was, that was the inspiration for this. Brian saw this, saw this photograph that, um, that I sent him. And he said, yeah, I want that. Can, 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 can I ask you a question? Like, how, why do you come? Why do you use your your body uh, like, for the torture like, for, for the experiments? Like because it, it can be dangerous. It can be really painful. Like yeah, I, I'm not too concerned with that. Um, really, it all comes from drawing for me. Everything I do starts with drawing, and so I like like to draw my feelings. I like to feel many different things and illustrate them and use art as a way to experiment with life and use life as a way to experiment with art. And so I don't know why personally what's inside of me that tends to focus more on negative things, but when I'm all the time when I come up with these like negative feelings or something, I use art as a way to turn it around, make something positive and creative about it, so that way it doesn't stay negative inside of me. I don't mean to sound like new agey, like preachy or something, but it's a really practical uh, way, almost like therapy or something, like a really practical way to deal with art and life in general. A way maybe not to go to the purgatory, Yeah, yeah. Purgatory, it's a song we're gonna listen, the song that is published uh, on the book of the Shurdi, La Troisième Oreille, on the uh, collection Ripenoff. And Maybe we wanna talk about um, this? Yes, I, I would like to add uh, this, this sound that you hear is my recreation, the recreation of my experience for nine days, 24 hours a day, every minute of the day I experienced this and it, it was like a living hell on earth. And so then I was on Facebook telling everybody, this, this is what I'm experiencing, this is like really, could be damaging like permanently and I'm really like frightened and stuff. And then one person from Poland said there was a, a student in England that went to a heavy metal concert and stood like like big like Metallica or something like a really big concert and they stood right next to the speakers or the amps or something and he reported having the same exact experience with these uh, frequencies like purgatory and he went to all these different uh, ear doctors and nobody could cure him and then he put a bullet in his head he like killed himself he couldn't take it no more and so then this was like the One feedback where the, I said, well, how am I supposed to stop it? It's already started right now. I've had nine days of this. And then what I tried to do was on the computer find a really close uh, f frequency, like a hertz, like a 8,000 cycle frequency. I tried to find, like, match up what frequencies it was that were, like, bothering so much so then I could compose like music out of it if I had to. So then I wrote a symphony for eight frequency generators, but I don't know how to write music or anything, so it looks, it just looks like a red pen and it's really crazy. <laughs> but it, 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 luckily it went away. I'm really thankful that it went away. But what I learned from it was that it was because my ears, it, I, I don't believe it was from damage that was caused. I believe it was because there was a lack of sensation, a lack of sensory input, and so my ears were creating these sounds on their own to try to interact with the world because I felt like they were their own organ, like they were their own, like they had their own little brain in there or something. Because when I was on the computer and I was trying to match up the frequencies, I found one frequency, I think it was around 8,000 cycles, and I played it and then my ears went crazy and I stopped it. And then like 20 minutes later, I was laying on the couch perfectly still and then all of a sudden, my ears just started looping that same exact frequency over and over again. So then I went to play it again to see if it was the same one and then it switched to like 10,000 cycles and then it was almost like creating some kind of a harmonics or something and then I said okay my ears they're interacting with these other sounds and so if, if, if I'm stuck living like this for the rest of my life I can still write I'll learn how to compose music and I can still make it so what you're going to hear is what I 
tried to replicate while I was experiencing it. So it's probably best with like headphones because there's a lot of dynamics between each ear. 